Great. So what we're going to we're going to start right in. I'm introducing Sarah Carr Jordan. She's from the Flower Valley Quilt Guild. Sarah. Well, thank you, Peggy. I, I heard him say, "Don't touch the mic." It's a privilege for me to stand before you today to present my quilts. This is something that I have never done in the past, and I'm excited about it, and I hope that you enjoy it. In fact, I know you will. As she said, I am from Flower Valley Quilt Gill, which meets in Ferguson on Clark at Zion Lutheran Church every third Thursday night if anybody's interested in coming out. And I am a retired nurse, and I've been quilting, my goodness, since 1994. I, what I'd like for you to know is that I started quilting with a friend. She's not here today, so I won't call her name, but we started together, and the very first quilt I made, which I want them to show, I got the pattern from Sofro. If any of you know that name, that's a very old name. It's upside down, it's upside down, but that's it. This is the first quilt that I made, and most of those pieces on that quilt are applique. There are some, there are some pieces in there also, but I had no idea what I was doing. I knew I could do it, but I had no idea what I was doing. We thought we could do it, me and my friend. But this is what we came up with. Now, I started that quilt in, as I said, 1994. And we completed that quilt. I had it completed. I think it's on the label. Oh, yeah, the label. 1999 is when I had it. <laughs> actually, I finished it and had it actually quilted by someone else. So, yeah. And of course, it's a Christmas quilt. The, the very next quilt that I'm showing is Stepping Into Christmas. And as you can see, some of the same fabrics from that first quilt are in this quilt. And I had a lot of them left over. And I completed this quilt in 2007. And if you like to, turn, if you would turn it over, you can see that I have a lot of scraps of red greens and uh, that I put on the back to make the backing. So that's that's how I finished it. But I'm getting rid of scraps. That's it. Yeah. The very next quilt will be. It's called abundantly blessed. And it's a table topper. Yeah, if you could fold those up and just put them all in a stack. This is a table topper, and I completed this quilt in 2010. Yeah, I, you know, it's like a rag quilt, if you could look at it. And, and it may have, uh, they're all, it's almost like an I Spy, if any of you are familiar with I Spy, but you, you cut out certain pieces and then you just kind of, uh, some of you may know the name of that. Uh, cathedral like the cathedral window, very similar. Okay. The back, I, I put that on the back and I said, well, since it's a table topper, I probably could turn it over in the fall and have it on the table yeah. <laughs> with that coloring. <laughs> The very next one is a Christmas card quilt. It's, it's a card holder. I have a card. You can sh just show where that card may, s how it would stick into the pocket of the quilt. And as you, as you notice, some of the same fabric. I had so much fabric, <laughs> so much of that particular fabric. I didn't know how to buy fabric, but I liked it at that time, so I just bought almost like boatloads of it. <laughs> I'm sure my husband can tell you about that, but <laughs> okay. And the very next quilt 
is another table topper and it is called Joy, Peace and Love. I started this quilt in 2002 and it was an online uh, design and I completed it in 2006, I believe it was. Oh, 2010. Okay, 2010. So you can see I start a quilt. I don't always finish it right away, but I may eventually get to it. And then that's what happened there. And then the back, I put a backing on there that's red, white, and blue. And I, like I said, it's a table topper, so I could use it for patriotic also. Let's try this. This next quilt is called International Santa Faces. And I finished that quilt in 2000. I think it was 2000, yes. And if you look closely, it's just many, it's just international faces. And you can just see faces of many colors and all sizes also. Okay. And uh, you may notice, I don't know if you can from there, but the sun, after hanging a quilt for a while, the sun kind of takes coloring out of a quilt. Uh, and most of you may know that, but especially dark blues, reds, deep greens. This is a table runner. Um, it was a mystery. And a mystery, if I'm not mistaken, it was online. And a mystery just means you don't know how it's going to turn out or what it's really going to be. And so once I got started cutting the directions, this is what it turned out to be. And this one, it's a Christmas wreath, and it's called Snippets. It's a snippet where you put fusible uh, web, put fabric on fusible web and cut out pieces and just let it fall where it may, and you can kind of work it around. So I worked it around in a wreath, and then you iron it on. And that's what that is. And then the center um, it was supposed to be something else in the center, and I think I goofed. And so I ended up putting it on my embroidery machine and put Merry Christmas in the center. So. <laughs> and this, this is Happy Trees, and it's, it's, it's a mini wall hanger. And I just recently finished that one last year. I think. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm ready for now is some, I have three unfinished round robin quilts. And that's the first one. Round robin simply means the center of that quilt, you, the first person starts with a center. And if you will see this center of mine was uh, an applique, floral applique. You, then you pass that center to another person, and that person puts a round on it, puts a border on it or, or a, a fabric around that center. Then the next person, and then you pass it on to someone else, and then they put a, a, a round on. And let me just point to it. This, is, this was what I did, and I put this on. Someone else came along and put this and this along. Then someone else came and put that on. You pass it along. And then this last one was placed on there. So again, that's called round robin. And as you see, it's not finished. And I don't know when. <laughs> I don't know when. It's close. Oh, it will not round again, I can tell you that. Uh, uh, if I finish, it will finish as the size that it is now. This is another round robin. And that's my center. And then I passed it. And as you see, there should be five more. This is one. I, I put this and this on. Someone else put that, then here, then here, then there. Oh. Now, this is going to get quilted. It has to be quilted. quilted. This is not finished. But that's the end of the rounds to it. This center 
was my first quilt class that was in 1994 and I just had it laying around for years and when someone said let's do uh, let's do a round robin I passed it around and this is what I got <laughs> but the center was mine okay now this is a snippet quilt also I showed you snippet in Christmas and this is snippet uh, with a floral in a vase nice wall hanging yeah finished that in 2006 now we'll get into what I call challenge quilts challenge quilts simply mean that certain criteria has been given to you to make a quilt and this was a quilt guild challenge a my small group and this first one was an interpretation of a picture that was the challenge interpretate it a picture have a picture and make a quilt of that picture I took this picture on vacation I think it was in the Bahamas I don't know somewhere <laughs> um, and it won first prize that was in 2007 and the pictures on there it's at the this is the picture at the bottom so if you would like to look at that the small ones they can kind of leave around you can pat you can really pass it around if they like to see it if nobody has cake right now <laughs> okay and the next is called blast of red and the criteria for this picture was to just make the quilt read red and you make the you make up the pattern and that's what I did and it's really a uh, four patch it, it's a four patch and it won first prize not and, and I just completed that this year 2014 uh, hmm. oh looking into the wild this is this also was a um, challenge quilt and you know what I can't remember what the challenge was but I think it was to make uh, animals make it look like you were outdoors doorsy in some way and so I uh, looking outdoors and so those are windows so looking into the wild Uh, and this is a challenge quilt where we were asked to take take a bag so I believe that's what it was take a bag and make the quilt look exactly like that bag and I think that's what I did <laughs> and it's three-dimensional and it did win second prize okay. and that was 2009 All of these quilts are machine quilted, if you're wondering. I don't have anything here that's hand quilted. This, is, this criteria was to make a quilt that, uh, if I'm not, not mistaken, it was a song. And uh, diamonds in the sky with diamonds. I think that's Lucy in the sky with diamonds. But I just, I just said in the sky with diamonds. And that one was completed in 2009. The next is water. And the name of it is my best quencher. If you don't, you can't tell this, but it's three dimensional and the straw and the glass glows in the dark. If we put light on it and then put it in the dark and it come out, you, it, it's glow in the dark fabric. That's why it would glow in the dark. And this next quilt, and that's all of the challenges. This next quilt is a ram's quilt that I made for my husband. His name is Thomas. And the T's, if you can see the T's around the center, 
It's the T blocks. And I made that quilt in 2003. I really thought he would hang it in, the, in his den, but he did for a while, and now he keeps it folded up like it's precious. So I guess that's good. <laughs> but that's it. And this very next quilt is an all wool quilt. And I call it Goodwill quilt because a friend and I went around to the Goodwills and Salvation Armies and got all the different wools that we could find in many colors as we could, cut it up and Disappear in nine patch. That was the pattern. We used this disappear in nine patch. And what you see in florals came from my embroidery machine. So I embroidered different ones and then put it all together. And it is all wool except for the back. The back is cotton flannel. And, and it has thermal batting, if you're familiar with that. Stack and whack is a technique where you stack the fabric and then you cut it a certain way with uh, rulers. And I've had that hanging in my lower level for quite a few years. Um, 2001, and this is the back again, trying to use up some of the scraps of the fabric. So it's called Ocean Wonder. The filler is generally warm and natural batting. Uh, and as I said on the wool quilt, I use Thermore, which is very similar. And it's a little lighter weight than the warm and natural. Sometimes I use 100% polyester, especially on the smaller quilts for uh, wall hangings. But like this, like this one is uh, warm and natural in this. This is one of the international mystery quilts. Again, when I say mystery, when we began, we don't know what it's gonna turn out to be. And since we, I was at a quilt shop and it was called International Mystery Quilts and it was a monthly class we were having, this happens to be Italian meatballs. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. This next quilt is another international mystery, uh, flying geese, and it's called Canadian geese. Uh, did I have a year on that? Yeah. And that was December 2006. And that's it. This is called French Rose Picardy. And all of the, as I said, the quilting is done on the machine. This one, I happen to have a long arm. Some of you may know what that is, a long arm machine. And most of my quilts now are quilted on my long arm machine. I have quilted some on my regular machine, but it's not as fancy as the long arm, and it's all freehand work. I don't have anything that's programmed. This next quilt is Mexican Stars. And again, that was an international quilt. Can everybody <laughs> can't get behind the post? Yeah. And then the back, the backing, I had some fabric that looked like it would go with Mexican. So the desert. Yeah. But it's Mexican stars. This is German braid. It's fall, a fall roll of leaves. Mm -hmm. 
many of my quilts I put sleeves on the back so that I can hang them. So I do hang my quilts. That's another thing. I do hang my quilts, change them around and hang them. Yes, yes, I did it. Uh, I can get a quilt done, I guess, if I concentrate in a couple days. If I concentrate. <laughs> yeah. Not the whole quilt. She asked me how long would it take me to quilt it on the long arm machine. Once, once I load the machine, I can have it done in a couple of days. Once I load it. Now this is a patriotic quilt. I think I kind of just made this one up. And finished it in 2005. And I managed to have some stars that I could put on the back. And this next quilt is a family reunion signature quilt. I was going to a family reunion in 1999, and I thought, why not have something so that they can sign? And I quickly pulled something together, and many of the family members signed this quilt. And then, as I said, I started in 2099, and then I, I didn't finish it until 2007. <laughs> yeah. This next quilt. I started working on this quilt at a retreat, and it's called Circle of Stars. And I liked it so well, I started in September 07 and did complete it in November 07, so that is kind of unusual. <laughs> When I have lots of fabric, then I just put it on the back. So. Now, this Irish chain was one of my first quilt tops. It started in 05. Now, I'm sorry, not 05. It started in 1995. And then once I got my long arm in 06, I decided, finish that quilt. You started in 95. And so that's what that is, some, which is some of the very old fabrics but I thought I'd finish anyway. It's nice and soft, too. That, that. <laughs> and this next quilt is called Turning 20. And that's a pattern. And I won the fabric at Flower Valley uh, from, um, I think it was a raffle drawing, yeah, and I won, and I was happy about that. I don't usually win, but I won that fabric, and that's what I made with it. The, the quilting on this quilt is on my regular machine. So. Now this next quilt, this is a prize winning quilt. I haven't won a prize on it, but I think it's prize winning. <laughs> it's called Charmed Exploding Stars. I started this quilt in 2005 and completed it in 2011. This quilt has all half square triangles. And when you hear something saying charmed, it means that every piece of fabric is different. There is 1,568 half square triangles in this quilt. And that's why I say it's prize winning <laughs> to me. 
that this is a fence rail five strip rail fence and I started this quilt in 2002 and completed it in 2008 <laughs> if I, I I would think that I could quilt start a quilt and finish it in the same year if I kept at it my concentration won't let me do that I'm so busy in other things that's one reason I put them down go back to them so I'm not I don't just sit and quilt 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 sew and quilt no I'm busy doing other things Yeah, that's one of the largest. This quilt is called Shuffle. Shuffle quilt. I started it at a retreat in 2013. And believe it or not, finished it June 13. So I had a little more time right there on that quilt and got it done sooner. Yeah. The, the fabrics in that quilt, we were told to pick fabrics on our own. And this come out of my stash, <laughs> believe it or not. And lights and darks, as you could see, the you, lights and darks. And so I concentrated on, they're showing the back. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all scrap pieces that I had. I think it was 10 uh, whites, uh, 10 lights, and 10 darks. And they're all half square triangles. They just happen to be much larger than what you saw in the star quilt over here, the other one. There's 800 half square triangles in this quilt. And I started it in 2001 and completed it in 2005. And the quilting is, is not my quilting on this one. I sent this quilting to Laramie, Wyoming. And uh, a friend quilted it for me. That one appraised pretty high too. And that's all I have.